Hi everybody, welcome back. We are looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 9 and I want to look today at the third person pronoun, autos. You've come across this before a little bit. Today I'm going to talk to you in more detail about the different things it can mean. For some reason people find this quite tricky. I think uh, Duff's explanation, though clear enough, is not um, as good as... Oh hello, there's a spider here. Hold on, get rid of him. Sorry about that buddy. <laughs> not as good as many of his other explanations are. And so I've got a, a way of explaining this which I hope will cut through some of the confusion for you and make things a little bit easier. And that's what I've got the, the fourth line down here, hot anthropos blepe het out on. We'll come to that in a minute because that will help us to understand what's going on here. Let's go through this one line at a time because this these first three lines illustrate the three ways in which the pronoun autos can be used. The mnemonic for you is this little phrase, self, same, pronoun, self, same, pronoun. Those three words are little reminders of the three ways in which this pronoun can be used. And we start with pronoun, then do same, and we do self. We'll go down here and look at them one at a time and I'll show you what I mean. First, let's look at this sentence, hot anthropos blepe auton. The man sees him. This is the use of autos that you've already encountered when the pronoun here in the accusative singular is used uh, just as a pronoun, as the, in this case it's the object of the verb blepe. So the man, hot anthropos, anthropos, sees him. Pronoun. That's the use of autos you're already familiar with. In this section of Duff, what's being introduced are two other new ways in which autos can also be used. It can be used in this way. Hot autos anthropos blepe. Notice the word order. The red pronoun comes between the article and its noun. And it's in the same case and it will have the same number. Autos anthropos, blepe. When this word order is used, the pronoun means same. The same man sees. That's what it means. Notice it's a different meaning from here. Here it's used as a pronoun. Here it's used as an adjective, as Duff points out. The same man sees. Self, same pronoun. We've now looked at this and this usage of autos. What's the third usage of it which Duff highlights here? It is the so-called emphatic use. When the pronoun autos appears before the article and its noun, and here it means himself or herself or itself or if it's plural themselves. That is to say, it's emphasising in some way or for some purpose the subject, hot anthropos. So the way we translate this, if you wanted to do it super literally just to get the feel for how the, the Greek words translate uh, woodenly into English, it would be himself the man sees. But of course the way we'd say that in English is the man himself sees. The man himself sees. You see that? It's emphasising it's the man as opposed to somebody else. So let's just look at these now in this order. Self, same, pronoun. The man himself sees. The same man sees. The man sees him. Can you see that? Self, same, pronoun. So those are the ways in which... Uh, autos can be used. So whenever you come across an autos, if you're kind of puzzled with what it's doing, which you might be initially if it's not being used in this pronoun sense that you're used to, what I want you to do is to stop and go self same pronoun and then try and figure out which of these three it is. And uh, if the word order looks unfamiliar to you, it'll be one of these. If it's not this one, the same man, or autos anthropos, It'll be this one. And this is the one I think that looks familiar, that looks unfamiliar to people. It looks a bit odd. What's this pronoun doing here? We've already got a subject. We've got another thing. 
just let that be a little uh, indicator to you that here we're dealing with the emphatic use of the pronoun. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because the, the whole point about an emphatic use of a, of a pronoun, well, really, an, it's a pronoun used adjectivally, but you, you, the emphatic use of, ad, of autos is that it's not necessary in order to make sense of the, sen of the sentence. The man sees, makes perfect sense on his own, but autos adds a certain emphasis. The man himself sees. Now, why, then, did I include this extra complication underneath that solid line I've just drawn of an additional uh, pronoun, which is a completely new one, the pronoun heautos, from which we get heauton. Heautos, as Duff explains, is the third person reflexive pronoun. And the reflexive pronoun also means himself. But it means himself not in this emphatic sense, the man himself sees, but in the sense in which the action is performed upon one's self. So, illustrate here, the man sees himself. Can you see that? This means himself, he out on. Uh, it declines, uh, obviously, in feminine and neuter, so herself, itself, and in the plural, um, themselves, and so on and so forth. And this is used as a different kind of himself, not the emphatic himself, but the reflexive himself. To put it another way, in English, we use the word himself in this emphatic sense, and we use the same word in a reflexive sense. Oops, dear. Reflexive sense. Um, the man sees himself looking in the mirror. In Greek, they use those, those two words are different. The emphatic is the third person pronoun autos. The reflexive is the third person reflexive pronoun he autos. Because of that, as Duff points out, this is never going to appear in the nominative because it will always be the object of a verb or perhaps an um, indirect object or it be in the genitive or dative or the accusative. It will never be in the nominative. If we're in the nominative, it would be the man himself sees and it will, the, the uh, emphatic use will be implied. So that's an attempt to untangle first the different things that autos can mean. And I encourage you to remember this little mnemonic, self, same, pronoun, those three uses are the possible uses. And then second, to disentangle it from the other himself in English, which is the reflexive himself, when in this case, he, the subject, is also the object. The man sees himself. I hope that's helpful. It is a little complex. What's actually going to happen as you do some of the exercises, which we'll come to shortly, uh, you'll start to untangle this and it will become more instinctive to you. This is the one I've, I tend to find puzzles people. And as long as you remember that it can mean same, like here, this one isn't such a big deal. That one at the top, of course, is already familiar to you. So keep going with this 20, 10 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, sorry, 30 minutes a day for five or six days a week. And we'll have you mastering this stuff and reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. Okay, God bless and bye for now.